great things such as supposedly regress people in time to pre to former lives that they had mm. and of course after the session is over the person would not know a thing about ancient history and the person that she's talk she or he has talked about uh, performing you know certain deeds will say uh, three four thousand years ago but this was their, their strategy now th what this would, uh, would do for the, the thing is this that uh, it would create in the minds of the general public solidly set in the mind of the general public uh, an unwavering trust in that great deception in other words people could you know it, they would believe it this person is as was hypnotized was regressing time to you know former lives and uh, did this and did that and no deception maybe alexander the great we'll say you know and some of his generals and people like that and the person after the session is over you know brings out comes out of hypnotism and he or she doesn't know what she's talking about so. so now this would be a way of this of uh, de the western world through the avenue of mysticism mm. now the time came when uh, lucifer decided that he had to choose a person to initiate this thing and uh, Franz Mesmer, which was an Austrian physician, was chosen. Because and the priest told you all of this? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because he was most capable. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Mesmer originated a theory called animal magnetism, later on, later on named Mesmerism. Mesmer was led by the spirits to believe, and this is what the priest said, was led by the spirits to believe that certain persons have a magnetic influence within themselves, so to speak, that would cause them to have great power over, over other persons, even to the point of placing them into a trance. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, that was readily accepted by people in general, at the, at the time that uh, Mesmer lived. So people realize, you know, they said that some people have got the capacity to put you into a trance, that's the way. Now, by the time that he died, in 1815, a lot of the physicians in Europe were using hypnotism as a means of anesthesia. Now, hypnotism is the same as mesmerism? That's right. Okay. So, mesmerism is, that's been uh, uh, developed to a higher degree of uh, refinement. And... Uh, the priest went on saying that he, the plan of Satan uh, to um, deceive the human family this way, he says is the most intriguing thing to his mind. And he went on saying how it was going to be brought about. He said that <clears throat> a fellow by the name of uh, Darwin and uh, another fellow by the name of uh, Thomas Henry Huxley would be used by the spirits because in their childhood they had been hypnotized by medical doctors and they figured that, that they would be real good subjects uh, to uh, lead the people into this belief um, that they had and, uh, that Satan wanted to bring into people's lives. Now what were those three points again Roger? The three things yeah. were, number one, that they did not want Satan, Satan did not want the human family to think that he or his angels existed. Right. The second point that you made had to do with taking control of people's minds. That's right. The third point was what? Was to destroy the Bible without burning it. Okay. You see. And what was his strategy on that? On that, um, it was very interesting. Because after the great general council, it was decided that Satan would tutor Charles Darwin personally in setting up the, uh, uh, the principles of his theories of evolution. He was tutored by Lucifer himself, the fallen Lucifer. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it was understood, Satan and his uh, spirit counselors understood that if a person was led to believe in the theory of evolution, 
It would, in his life, destroy completely the, the, the uh, creation week of the Bible, the fall of man, and the plan of redemption. It would do away with it. In one fell swoop. Yeah. Now, he made a, a unique statement. He said that according to the spirits, anyone that teaches a theory of evolution is considered to be a minister of a great religious system. See, they call it the religious system, the theory of evolution, <laughs> because it is a, a system of schooling people and getting them to disqualify themselves from being members of Christ's kingdom. And he said that every teacher of that theory is recognized by the spirits as a person of great value and receives a very special unction from Satan himself, giving great power to induce spiritual blindness, to convince and convert. Three capacities are given to those teachers of the theory. Then, that's not all. The priest says that Satan considers the teachers of the theory of evolution to be so valuable to him that in the sight of all the inhabitants of the galaxies, he assigns a retinue of bright, beautiful angels to follow that, that uh, educator all the remainder of his life. And that in the sight of the inhabitants of the galaxies is the greatest honor that he can bestow upon his workers, upon mankind, and to, uh, you know, until the controversy is finished. Mm. That was quite uh, enlightening. Now the high priest was talking just sort of like a preacher would talk up front? Was he enthusiastic? Did he have a, was he, did he seem like he had bought into this and was excited about oh, it? Oh yeah, he believed it 100%. No question about it, everything. Why, why would he be so excited about <coughs> spirits trying to deceive human beings? Because obviously out of this council of the 1700s, deception was a major part mm -hmm. of the strategy. Why? Well, he says it's deception. It's like politics. You know, you believe in one candidate, the other person believes in the other candidate, and they're all, they're, they're fighting to get, to get, you know, the position. And it's just a matter of who's going to be the smartest. And with uh, Lucifer, the fallen cherubim, uh, he's very smart. He's going to win, and Christ's going to abdicate the, the, you know, the rights of the planet. He's going to resurrect his people, have established his kingdom that lasts for uh, ever and ever. God won't be able to destroy him because it would be against, against God's, uh, the Creator's nature to destroy Lucifer in the fire. Beside that, he said, uh, Spirits now, even spirits, have the capacity now to outlive fire. He says, you don't believe it, go to India or, or, or some of those uh, countries where they have uh, uh, fire walkers. And it's done by the power of the demon spirits. These people are energized by demon spirits so they can walk on those hot coals without burning themselves. And this is what the high priest said. And he says, if they want to use uh, fire, they can use it. It's not going to burn anybody. So that's the way, that's the way they believe. Once so they believe. This, this high priest was almost talking to your group in an evangelistic fervor. Oh, yeah, because he figures that uh, he's going to be one of the higher-ups in, in, the, in the great kingdom. Okay. So. Now, of the group that was there that night, 60, 70 people, I think you've mentioned before. Yeah, it varied. How many of those were people who were hardcore members, and how many of them were new inductees? Oh, we, were only, we were the only two uh, was youngsters you there, and, so to speak. You and your friend, and how old were you at that time, Roger? I was about uh, 20. 20 years old? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 20 years old. Did you have a feeling of awe over the fact that you had been chosen? Yes, in a way. And then I, I got thinking about this. When am I going to have to pay the price, the cost? My parents had brought me up like this. If you get involved with evil, you're going to reap what you sowed. So you want to uh, be upright in life. And if you associate with evildoers, they'll probably land you in jail or somewhere else that you wouldn't want to be. So you, there's always a price to be paid. So you had that little something yeah. maybe instilled by your mother yeah. Yeah. and father a long time ago that kept you from yeah. making that full commitment. Now, one of the things that uh, really amazed me and, and uh, shocked me and made me sick at heart. It's when the priests uh, talk about uh, Christian idolatry. What is Christian idolatry? The priest mentioned that word. Yeah. Tell, us, tell us what he said, Roger. 
He said that Christian idolatry is the, the, the most grandiose or great deception that has ever been brought up upon the uh, human family, upon mankind. And he says, in, and he boasted, that demon spirits are continually defiling Christian churches through the avenue of necromancy by using a form of spirit worship that involves hundreds of millions of Christians into idolatry without their being aware of it. Now, what is necromancy? Describe ne or define necromancy for me. Their belief, popular belief of necromancy, is to conjure the spirits of the dead. So that you can speak with someone who has died. Right. Like the seance that you originally went to mm -hmm. was they, 